three seems to be the magic number. So if you're looking to create a nice little section of three columns uh, with some images and buttons and a little bit of information in it, this is how you do it. G'day, I'm Jason. You might have seen a layout looking a bit like this before. Uh, you find them everywhere on the web and it, it kind of works. It gives it a nice balance. You know, three is a nice easy number to absorb. So what we're gonna do today is step through how to set this up using Astra Pro with the Spectra Blocks plugin installed. Let's get into it. So first of all, I've got my example page here that I'm going to uh, put this on. And I'm just going to uh, start a new line here. And I'm gonna start typing uh, container because that's my starting point. That's what I'm gonna start building with. And I'm gonna choose three columns. And that gives me the three columns there to start off with. So what I'm gonna do first is pop an image in there and I'm gonna start off with that one as an example. And then I'm going to insert after that um, my headline. Oop, and I'll center that in that column. And here is some, whoop, some stuff to go under it. And then I'm gonna type forward slash buttons. I'm gonna use the first one here do the thing and I'm just going to link it to a hash at the moment obviously this would ideally link to a page or where you got to go but just to, to get things started if I put that in there it activates the the link part of the button but it doesn't actually go anywhere at this point now I'm just going to center that button in there I centered the headline already I'm going to center this text as well and I'm then going to center that image there so if I update that now, we'll just have a look at what we've done quickly. And whoop, I missed that, view the page. And so you can see we've got space for a couple of other columns over there, but we've started off with an image, a headline, a bit of text, and then a button that is activating. Uh, it's got a link, but the link is just a hash, which is, um, which is nothing, but it's just to test it out. All right, so if we come back here, and I'll just give you a quick look at what we were looking at here. So inside this container that I've just put there, I've got three containers, which are my three columns, and you can see them changing a bit as I hover over them. And inside this first one, I've got an image, a headline, a paragraph, and then uh, my buttons. So I'm gonna collapse that out of the way now. So what I'm gonna do here is just look at a couple of things here bit by bit. Now, you might want an image at the top could be an icon as well if you have got an icon ready to go with it. If you can't, a good place to look for icons is the Noun Project. If you just Google the Noun Project, uh, there's a gazillion icons there um, that might be useful. Um, icons are a funny thing though. If you can find an icon that actually is usefully representative of, of what you're trying to put in this section, that's great, um, but sometimes they don't work. Now, in terms of the image here, so I've just got this in at the large size here, which is probably loading uh, more data than we need to considering the size of that. So I might change that to medium if I wanted to leave it in that, in that aspect ratio. Or if I change it to thumbnail, you'll see it squares it up for me. That, that is gonna crop the image into a thumbnail. So whatever's sort of left or right, you might lose. Whether that's important or not, um, you have to assess on a case-by-case -case basis. So either thumbnail or medium I would be using in there just to keep the download speed as fast as you can. Now the other thing too is you can certainly play around with the order of these things as well. So if I put, you know, I can put the image under the headline for example and have headline image text call to action. So there's no real rules around that. Um, have a bit of a tinker with them and see what fits. I'd be inclined to start with an, an image or an icon at the top though and, and work down. So once we're happy with the first one, um, it's then easy enough to just click and then uh, shift click the bottom one. So I've got all selected and then I can copy those blocks and inside the next container, if I just start with a paragraph and then paste, and then in the third block there, just start with a paragraph and then paste. So once I'm happy with that first column, Copying and pasting um, into the other three columns just saves you sort of tinkering with settings and center alignments and so on and so forth uh, from there. 
Now I'm just going to pop this out of the way for a minute. Now quite often, whoop, all of these won't be the same height. You might have a headline that runs over two lines, or different amounts of text. Uh, so I've got three columns there. Okay, so we've now got three different heights of the columns, and that's where we need to start tinkering a little bit. So if I have a look at that, that's a bit of a mess. We've got different heights and, and whatnot all over the place. So option one is to come back here, select the parent container that's got the three um, columns inside it. So with the parent container selected, I'll go flex properties and just change the alignment here to top. And then if I update that and view the page, you'll see at least now we're starting at the top and moving down because the images are all sort of the same size. We've then got the headlines starting on the same uh, same level, uh, but the buttons on the bottom are then you know, dancing around a little bit. Now, this may or may not bother you. Uh, I've got plenty of clients who aren't bothered. I've got some who are. What's, you know, what's your favorite color? There's no right or wrong answer to that. Um, either way, it doesn't matter if I was to click view, uh, sorry, not view page source, inspect and make sure that I've got this one clicked so I can see it on a phone. On a phone, it makes no difference at all because it just runs down the page. Uh, but if I did want to have these line up so that the buttons at the bottom were all lined up vertically as well, a um, couple of extra steps we need to worry about. So I'll come back here and select my parent container. Now, by default, these containers are just gonna be as high, sorry, let me just clarify that. These child containers are only as high as they need to be. So see if I click that one, the container isn't as tall as the parent is. See, it finally finishes there. So what we need to do is come back to the parent container and under the container settings here, choose equal height. Now straight away, if I click that one, then you'll see that it is now the full height, the same height as everything else. But that's not what we want either. That's staggered and, and looks awful. So if I come back to flex properties now with the child container selected, so I'm only editing this column at the moment. Let's see, I've got my uh, box around there. I'm only editing this column. What I wanna do is under flex properties, change the justify content to space between. You see that stretches it out. Same with the next one, under flex properties, space between, and then the final one, under flex properties there, space between. Now, you notice with the taller one there, it didn't actually make any difference. So I don't need to stretch the taller one out because that's as high as the section is anyway. But just to maintain good hygiene over the way things are, I would change the settings the same for all of the columns because it may well be later on, you actually alter that headline or put some more information here or in one of these shorter ones, and then it won't line up and you'll be scratching your head and wondering why. So just change them all to be the same. And if I update that now and view the page, here we go, photos aligned at the top, buttons aligned at the bottom. There's our three um, you know, summary sections with calls to action. So I was just editing this and I realized I missed a step here, um, a really ugly thing that needs fixing as well. So we've got these things stretched out, but because there's less content here, this headline falls below the level of these two. And if that one's a little on the lower side there with uh, two paragraphs rather than three in here. So there's a pretty easy fix for that. So what we need to do there is jump back to editing the page. So what I need to do to keep the image and if I shift click headline to keep them together to group them at the top of the page. With them both selected, group them. And that joins those two together in a group, which means that those two can stay together to be forced up to the top of the paragraph. Same with these, image, shift click, headline, group. And then the last one as well, image, shift kick, headline, shift kick, shift click, and group. So once I've grouped my image and headline up there, I can still you know, get to them individually. They're still there inside that group. Uh, but what the group does is keeps them together at the top of each column. All right, 
missed that one before, but pretty easy fix. And of course, if I have a look at that here, it just collapses down nicely. So it's only on a phone as high it needs to be. You don't have those funny spaces uh, that you might have uh, if you did it via a different method. All right, nice easy one for today. Three columns, evenly spaced. Have fun. See you later.